morning, new beginning church, and our online family and friends, Lord, I lift your name on high. We are just so glad to be here on this morning. We just thank and praise God for allowing us to see 2022. If we don't take anything for granted because there are so many people in 2021 that are not able to see this day. And we just thank and praise God for giving us hope and strength. Just allowing us another chance. And you know what? I am just so glad about that. I'm so glad about that. And I give God praise. I give him honor for just allowing us to just to wake up this morning. And then for us to have our health and strength. If you are breathing, we give God praise. We're going to ask that you stand with to your feet. And you're going to help us sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. Because we give him glory.
through 26. Lamentations 3, verses 22 through 26 from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait patiently for the salvation of the Lord. Now, to wait quietly is the opposite of trying to make things happen. Instead of grumbling, complaining, or shouting, Waiting means trusting in God. To wait patiently is to trust that even when things are bad, in sickness, in the hospital, waiting with children, the scripture says to wait patiently on the Lord. And we thank God again for bringing us to this point in 2022. And we are looking forward to all of his blessings we are going to wait on God until our change comes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Lord, you've given us another privilege. You've given us another chance. You've given us another opportunity. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. You brought us over into a new year. Lord, we thank you. You kept us, Father God. God, we thank you. You've given us a, a portion of our health and strength. Lord, we thank you. Lord, you've given us a mind to worship you and to honor you. Lord, we thank you. God, you've given us another chance, Father God, to lift our hands, to raise our voices, to glorify your name. And Lord, we just say thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We thank you for the way you do things. Lord, we realize, Father God, if we wait on you, you will bless us. Bless us to wait quietly for you, Father God. Bless us to trust in you. Bless you. We, we, we ask you to bless us, Father God, that we will walk with before men and they will see you in us. Lord, we come to another Sunday morning. We've come to another first Sunday morning. We've come to another first Sunday morning in the new year. And Lord, we know we didn't make it on our own. God, you blessed us again. Lord, you've done it again. God, you've blessed us again. We don't deserve to be here. But God, you've given us another chance. And for that, we've come this morning just to say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our right mind. We, we thank you for a mind to worship you. We thank you for a mind to give ourselves unto you. And we praise you on today. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Forgive us for not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, we ask you to bless us, Father God, that we will walk according to your will, that we will be among the righteous ones that will give you the glory and give you honor and all the praise. Now we ask you to bless us in our service today. Bless us, Father God, that Jesus will be lifted, that Jesus Christ will be lifted, that men will be seen running to Jesus, that Jesus Christ will be lifted so that we will glorify God, the anointed one. Lord, we thank you, Father God. This is a privilege, Lord. We don't have to be here. You've given us a privilege, Father God. And for that, we thank you. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless the word, that the word will fall on good soil. That word will fall up on good soil and rise up, Father God, to commit our ways unto you. Speak to us, Lord. 
bless us to minister to you as you minister to us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. We thank you for the victory. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for what you have done. Lord, we say glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name. Lord, we magnify you. We make you big before men. Lord, we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, the one who gave his life for us, the one who rose for us, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
songwriter suggests that the blood of Jesus has power. Yeah, yeah. And he goes on to not only suggest that it has power, he says this power that the blood of Jesus has will never lose its power. All right. What the songwriter is saying to us today, you may not be able to depend on him, or you may not be able to depend on her. You may not be able to depend on it. You may not be able to depend on them, but you can depend on the blood of Jesus. For well, it's his blood that never loses, never loses his power. It's the blood of Jesus. His blood will never lose. Will never, ever, ever lose his power. His blood. Jesus' blood. My blood may be contaminated. Your blood may have issues. But the blood of Jesus has power. And it will never, ever, ever lose. Lose his power. Hallelujah to the Lord. Oh, we thank God for who he is. And what he has already done. He is the great God. He is the great King. Let me call your attention to 1 John chapter 3. First three verses, First John chapter 3. If you want to find it real quickly, go to Revelation in the back of your Bible and move back over one book. You'll have First John, Second John, Third John, then Revelation. So you go in the opposite direction. You will have Revelation, Third uh, John, Second John, then First John. First John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. In the New Testament, you can have to turn your hair off. Amen. 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 I'm reading from the New King James Version. When you found it, you will discover these words. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Mm. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. I want to talk about the wonder of God's love. All right. The wonder of God's love. God has launched us like a ball out of a cannon from 2021 into 2022. God, Lord, thank you. And I'm telling you, I'm excited about it. I'm, yeah. I'm glad that God did not let justice take control. I don't know about you this morning, but I don't deserve to be here. But God allowed mercy to come running my way. Justice had me on the ropes. And I really didn't know how to rope a dope because justice knows how to take you out. Right you see, if it had been for justice, right. I wouldn't have lived this long. Right. Because I deserve to be sentenced to death. And I deserve it now, and I deserved it a long time ago. Right. But for some reason, mercy came running. All right, all right, Push justice aside. Mm -hmm. God's love is a wonderful thing. And let me tell you, not just me in the building, not just me who are listening, but every person under the sound of my voice have God's mercy if you can hear. If you're breathing, if your heart is beating blood to every extremity of your body, let me tell you, mercy has taken her course. And she has done it one more time. You see, we, we deserve to die. We deserve to be, be, be sentenced to death. We deserve to be pushed up daisies. Come on, Pastor. But justice yeah. 
Midnights have this way. Yes, yes. God's amazing grace yes, yes. has given us one more chance. Yes, I came by on my way to the rapture to let you know it's only because of the wonders of God's love. Yes, right, He's a wonderful God. I'm amazed. I, like the Apostle John, am amazed at what God has done with us, for us, and through us. Yes, yes. God has taken no good investment has purified us and made us who we are. Right. Not because we're so holy, not because we're so committed, because when you talk about commitment, commitment escapes many of us. Uh -huh. <laughs> but God woke us up one more chance. So thank you, thank right. you. Yes, Lord. And I'm telling you today that I want to do my best, I want to raise my voice, I want to lift my hand and just thank God for what he has already done. And one person said, if he doesn't do anything else, he has done enough. All right. And he has done enough because I don't deserve what he's already done. God's love is a wonder. All right, now. This word wonder means amazement. I'm, I'm in awe. I'm struck. I'm astonished that God did, didn't take me out in the midst of my sin. And I'm not talking about sin when I was unsaved. I'm talking about sin since I've been saved. All right, all right. I'm talking about sin since I've been Holy Ghost filled. Well, well. I'm talking about sin going my own way, doing my own thing when I knew it was wrong. Yeah. God gave me another chance. Right. And for that this morning, I'm grateful. Right. Can you give me another chance? Yeah. Have, yes. Or do you deserve to be here? Uh -huh. Have you set things up where you deserve to be here? And the thing about us, we are too stingy to give God praise. All right, all right. We, we have come to be sophisticated. Yes. Well, we can sit with our arms folded. Right. We can hear the word. We can hear the music. And it does not faze us at all because, you know, we deserve to be here. All right. I beg to differ this morning. It's only because of God's love. Yes, yes, it's only because of God's amazing grace. Yes, yes, it's only because yes, of what God has done with us and yes, through us. Yes, when you look at the text, the Apostle John mm. writes to us and he says to us, he, he already talks about what the children of God are in Christ. Mm. He talks about the privileges we have and the inheritance we have through Jesus Christ. God has secured us. He did it from the foundation of the world. Before we knew of a when or where, God has just blessed us regardless of who we are. So the Apostle John picks up this thought and he talks about the wonders of God's love. In verse number three, he ends up by talking about Jesus is pure. But he begins by talking about the whole what manner of love God has bestowed on us. That we have the privilege of being called the children of God. Amen. King James says that the sons of God, and whenever you see the sons of God, he's talking about the children of God. In other words, it's not just for the brothers, it's for the sisters also. When he says, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. He says it with great admiration. He says, in verse, my, 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 first point, my first point to you today is there's, I am amazed by God. There is the amazement that God has given us and the fact that because we don't deserve to be here, God still allows us to be called the children of God. It's not because of your church attendance. Mm -hmm. It's not because of your dress code. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some denominations that says if you dress and wear your dress six inches above your knee, then you are not holy. Mm -hmm. Some would tell you if you wear makeup, then you are not saved. Mm -hmm. Some would tell you that lipstick is just not what you ought to do. And some would say, brothers, if you don't have on a suit every time you're in church, then you're not purified. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say in the text. The text declares that this is such a matter of love that we are amazed by what God has done. All right. 
My first point is, I'm amazed by God's love. Are you amazed? Are, are, you, are you just thrown off? I mean, it doesn't really get your attention because when you compare the love that men have for each other, it is nothing to the comparison of God's love. People will love you if you give them something. People will love you if you love them. People will love you if you do what they tell you to do. People will love you if you say what they tell you to say. People will love you if you act toward them like the way they want you to act toward them. But here it is, God, in the midst of our disobedience, yet loves us. That's amazing to me. That's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that there is no counterfeit in God's love. How do you know he crossed us over? I'm telling you, there's no counterfeit in God's love. He brought us through the storm and the rain. Yes, he did. The, the old 100 back home that we used to sing, if the Lord doesn't help me, I can't stand the rain. If the Lord doesn't help me, I can't handle the pain. Let me tell you, if the Lord doesn't help me, I just can't make it just on my own. He says, behold, what amazing, what wonderful, what love that God has toward us. He has this love toward us, and he loves us so much, he gives us the privilege of being called the children of the Most High. He, he gives us the privilege of being called the children of the amazing God. He says he has bestowed it upon us. This word bestow in the original Greek means that God has delivered it. God has secured it. And God has committed to it. God is committed to loving you in spite of you. Thank you. In spite of your meanness. And let me tell you, church folk can be mean. I mean, they can be some bigger bears. They can, I mean, church folk knows how to know how to roll their eyes. They know how to roll their necks. They know how to tell you off. They know how to roll their lips up like a two-year-old baby when he, he gets upset. Church folk or something. But God, in the midst of it all, he allows us to be called the children of God. This God, this God, Theos God. The God of the divinity. The, the, the divine one himself. The God who is the supreme God. The God that knows everything, he allows us to be called the children of God. That's a wonder to me. Yes, yes. This God, this God is an all-powerful God. He's omnipotent. He, he's all-powerful. He's almighty. He can speak blessings upon us in the morning and watch us out by noon day. He can wipe us out. But I mean, this God that we serve, he is all powerful. He can take 23 chromosomes from a woman, 23 chromosomes from a man, and create a whole brand new baby. This God is wonderful. That's right. yeah. This God is a divine one. He knows us as we are. You see, Sister Davis married me because of what she didn't know. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Because she reminds me every chance she gets. Had I known then what I know now. My Lord. And then she goes on to say, she goes on to say, say, if I had known you back then, I wouldn't even take a peep at you. <laughs> but it's because God has cleaned me up. All right. God has blessed me. Yes. Yes, I got her attention, Brother Miles. Yeah. And she ain't been able to look away ever since then. <laughs> it's because of God's divine love. All right. He has blessed me. He, he, has given, he has blessed me better than I deserve. Yes, sir. That means he's given me favor. Yeah. Yeah. He's given me favor. As I walk through this life and things pop up, I may not have enough money, but I got faith. All right. All right. I may not have enough experience, but I got faith. All right. All right. I may not have enough education, but I got favor. And the good thing about favor, if I did break a little verb here and there, I use the old English like I did back home, favor ain't fair. Right. And because favor ain't fair, then we need to understand that God is just passing our favor to anyone who commit themselves to righteousness. Because I understand, he's bestowed it upon us. 
He's dropped it off. I mean, this is these are the days of Amazon deliveries. <laughs> Tell us, Sister David, I'm gonna have to take your Amazon account away. Don't do it, don't do it Pastor. Every time I look up to the middle, somebody is ringing the doorbell. They drop off a package and they, they take a note. <laughs> take a picture. Take a screen. Let me just share with you. God is better than Amazon. Right. He, he has bestowed. This word bestowed means that he has delivered it not to our front door, but in our hearts. He, he's not only delivered it by ringing on the doorbell, he has been ushering our heart by way of the Holy Spirit. He's been massaging our heart all this time. So he delivered it to us. And he's committed to keeping it for the rest of your life. Isn't that a good God? I'm amazed. I, I, I'm in amazement by God. I'm, I'm just blown off about God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that he allows us to be known, to be called, to be addressed, to be named the children of God. Amen. And I'm telling you, this Daddy said there's something in your name. He said, boy, every time I got ready to leave, he said, boy, I have a good name in this community. Yes, sir. He said, now when you get back here, I want to have a good name. He says, your name is not Weeks, your name is not Anderson, your name is not Pope, and he started calling names to everybody down the street. Your name is not Pendleton, your name is Davis. And the Davis name has a good name, and when you get back here, I want the Davis name to have a good name. God has called our names, and he has named us, he has called us children of God. I oftentimes tell people now, you, you talk about one of these days God's going to call your number. He won't call your number. He's going to call your name. All right, all right. Because he, he doesn't call numbers. He calls names. And when he calls your name, it doesn't matter which person's name is Mary other than you. He has identified you just by calling your name. He doesn't get the two Marys from you. Not only is he all powerful, he's omniscient. Yeah, all right. He is the all-knowing God. He sees everything. He saw you before you got here this morning. He saw you before you passed over last night. He, he saw you before he brought you from one year to the other just because he's all-knowing God. He is omniscience. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He sees everything. He sees he see you thinking right now, what time is he going to be out of here before 12 o'clock? He already knows what you're thinking. Is he going to be finished anytime soon? He's on his first point and he's still talking and he's been talking for 10 minutes already. Well, God knows what you're feeling. All right. All right. God knows your attitude. All right. Ephesians chapter 4 says you need to forget about the old things and the yeah. old way of yeah. darkness in which yeah. you lived in. Yeah, this is a good time for, for commitments and good time for New Year's resolutions. But those things usually last to March. And the revolution is gone. If you go by today, you can you could have started to this morning. If you go by today, gyms all over the nation are filled with New Year's resolution. People have committed to getting themselves in shape. They've committed to sticking to it. And guess what? They don't even have to give you a break. People are signing up today because mm -hmm. they committed to being whole physically. Mm -hmm. Around March, they start having to give deals. <laughs> It's called the law of supply and demand because the thrill is gone. So he says, he says to us that God has called us his own children. He says, therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. In this amazement, God has taken us and planted us in him. And he has planted himself in us. Let me tell you, you can say what you want to. I know Mathis Lee Head is what they call him. Davis is my daddy because I got some mannerism like him. Sometimes I'm like mama when I'm a chatterbox, but then other times I'm like daddy, I'm cool and smooth. 
And whenever you are a child of somebody, whenever you are a child of God, you ought to have some personalities like this. In Ephesians chapter 4, it said you need to put away those bad attitudes you had back then. He says, when you walked in darkness, you act like a person of the darkness. You act like a child of the devil, child of Lucifer, child of Satan. But now God has called us to be children of God. We got to put away those things. It's a good day. It's a, it's a good day for New Year's resolution. It's a good day for you to turn over a new leaf. It's a good day for you to commit more to God. It's a good day for you to walk like God so people can see God in you. Because the text declares they don't know you because they don't know your God. That's right. And we are living, walking epistles. We are living, walking stories. We are living examples of who God is. That's right. Now, is God proud? Of how you present him to other folk. You go to work and at lunchtime you're reading your Bible. And if somebody says something to you, cuss them out. <laughs> Walk around here talking about, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You may not be 50 yet, but when you get 50, you're going to use all of your mind. <laughs> And you're going to wish for some. I went to the car today between, between 8 o'clock this morning and Sunday school. I went to the car three times. Three times to get the same thing. Not multiple things. I went to the car. I was sitting in my office. The choir musicians were rehearsing. I went to the car three times to get the same thing. And finally, somebody distracted me. And guess what? I forgot about the thing. I went to the car to get it. And you walk around here talking about you gonna give somebody a piece of your mind. Matter of fact, young people probably need more of their mind than the senior saints do now. Because sometimes I think they can't think a little simple stuff. I mean, if you do this, then this is gonna happen. For every action, there's an opposite but equal reaction. Something's gonna take place, and they think and they don't think through it. We don't have time to give folks a piece of our mind. We are Christians. We are Christians. We are Christ-like. We are Christians. And because we are Christians, we carry ourselves like Christ. Uh, uh, Paul said, put away those old attitudes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Walk in him. And he says, he says, therefore, the world doesn't know you. How is the world going to know you if you act like the world? Let me just share, share with you. If the brothers are doing their drugs and, they walk, and you walk them, they offer you a bar. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> if, if they don't put it down or they don't apologize or they don't, or they, they just stick it in your mouth and you have it too. <laughs> the world has to know us by the way we carry ourselves. By the way we do things, by the way we handle ourselves. I'm just so amazed at God because God knew that we wouldn't handle ourselves very well. He says they don't know us because they don't know him. Yeah. All right. We want the world to get to know Jesus. Yeah. We want a waiting world. Our commitment this year are to present Jesus to everybody we see. Yeah. Don't think because you're on the other side of town it's all right to have food. Yeah. Don't think because it's dark it's all right to do your duty. Don't think because you're on the telephone and you're watching the television that it's all right to do anything that you want to do. The world will get to know God based on who you are. And that's why the world is in a state that they're in now is because they're watching those who say that they are the children of God and they see the children of God acting just like the world. All right. Say it. And I'm not talking about faith in our difference. I'm talking about the real deal on Monday, just like you were on Sunday. All right, now. It, it, it's good. It's good to be able to call you brother and sister on on Sunday. But if I have to call you Mister and Miss on Monday, it's because I can't identify the sisterhood and the brotherhood I saw on Sunday. I can't identify it on Monday. All right. So I call you and say, Mister. All right. Perfect respect. But I ought to be able to call you brother. Let me just park right here and say to you, preachers all over the world want to know, want people to know their titles. Uh, my Lord. <laughs> Leaders all over the world want people to know their titles. Mm -hmm. But God never calls us reverend. Not right now. 
God never called us pastor. God never called us apostle. God never called us those things. These are just titles. The good thing about it, when somebody calls you sister, somebody calls you brother, you ought to glorify God because they understand that you are the children, a part of the household, a part of the faith of God. Drop your titles. Introduce yourself. Because you are sister, because you are brother, God has blessed you. And when it's all over down here, he won't call you by your title. You better hope and pray, and you ought to demonstrate today so he can call you servant. All right. Because all right. the good thing about it is one of these old days. Yes, yes, he's yes. going to call me servant, and he's going to say, servant, well done. Amen. All right. good. And faithful service. So I'm amazed at who God is. My second point to you today, I'm a, I have assurance from God. Yes, sir. I'm amazed by God, but I have assurance by God. Look at verse number two. Beloved, whatever you do, when he says beloved, it means that God really loves us so much. Until not only does he call us by name, he calls us beloved. But Whitlock, have you ever tried to call her beloved? <laughs> when he gets home, he's going to say, hello, beloved. <laughs> beloved. God, God loves us so much until we are beloved of God. We are so, God is so attracted to us until God wants us to know that we are his beloved. So he says, John says, John says, beloved, now we are the children of God. And it has not been revealed what we shall be. But we do know one thing. Let me tell you the assurance. We do know one thing, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. When Jesus is revealed, we will be like him. Have you ever thought about it? You see, there are some people who are narcissistic right now. And they think they really got it going on. They think everybody owes them something. They believe that 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 they they have the, the corner of the market where, where they don't have to bow down and worship God. They have even come to the conclusion, they've even come to the conclusion, conclusion that where they are, they've gotten them on themselves there. They have gotten themselves to this point all on their own. They have come to the conclusion that they have arrived all by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then there are others who are worshiping men. Mm -hmm. The other day, they, they rolled in an a orange statue mm -hmm. of an ugly orange man mm -hmm. with a terrible attitude. Mm -hmm. And grown men bowed down oh, no. before another man's statue. They bow down before him. They, they, they have come to the conclusion that not only the, is he the spokesperson for the Republican Party, he is their God. Yeah. And they are literally bowing down before mm. another man. They come to the conclusion, not only do they have it going on, but they are honoring and glorifying another man. A man with some hair just a little bit more than I have. A man with an orange face that, that when he really gets upset, you think he's uh, that he really can get it. A man who will watch almost a million people die and then talk about how he pushed it through. And there are folks that's actually bowing down before him. Let me just share with you. Your pastor is not worthy of bowing down before. Yeah. Your prophet and your prophetess, your 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 anointed ones are not. Uh, they're not even qualified for you to even bow down before. Yeah. It's only God. The only God that that sits high and looks low. The God who who whose heaven is his is to his seating place. His throne is in heaven. Earth is his footstool. That's the only one you bow down before. Yeah. There is no man. And coliseums all over the world are being packed even in the pandemic to let a man blow on them. God is the one that we ought to honor. 
He's the divine one. Because when it's all over, every knee will bow. I say every knee will bow. It doesn't matter if they worship Muhammad or Buddha. It doesn't matter if they worship Confucius or Aristotle. It doesn't matter who their God may seem to be. I came by to tell you today that one of these old days, everything's going to bow before Jesus Christ, for he is Lord. ADT can't protect us. Greeks can't handle our protection. Only God. You see, folks start shooting the whole week ahead of time. I mean, shooting real guns. They shoot real stuff. They and God allowed us yeah. to lie between the bullets. Yeah. God allowed us to drive between the buckshots. Yeah. Right. God allowed us to, to move and, and navigate throughout this earth without somebody shooting us while we lay sleeping in our bed. It's only God that can keep us. He kept us yeah. in spite of us. We ought to bow down to him. Yeah. We ought to honor him. Right. We ought to give him glory yeah. and give him praise. Yes. Because God is revealing himself mm -hmm. unto us. I'm assured, and my assurance comes from God, that one of these days, it doesn't matter what I look like today. Yeah, yeah I used to have an afro, sister. I mean, I was, I had a major legal afro. But one thing I'm assured of, whether I got hair or not, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I will be changed. And not only will I have a sanctified body, I will have a glorified body on the other side. My final point, I'll leave you alone. We are purified through God. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And we ought to be amazed by God. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. We have assurance mm -hmm. from God. But most of all, we are purified. We are purified through God. Purified. This word purified means that we've been washed. Yes, yes, yes. The choir was singing the song, and I was like, Woo, man, good God Almighty, it's only the blood. Yeah. By which we have been washed. We, we have been washed clean. We, uh, old things are passed away. There's some stuff in last year you just need to leave in last year. There's some stuff that went on last year. There are some friends and some family members that you need to deal with look differently this year. There, there are some people that, that you have been going, you've been going broke for. Some people that, that every time you show up, they need something. They only call you until they need something. It's time for you to be delivered, baby. That's right. That there are some things that you have gone through. There are some doors you walk through. Every time God shuts the door, you throw it back open. God shuts the door again. You throw the door open again. Let me tell you, this is a brand new year. Walk away. You need to have a spirit of walking away. You need to have a spirit of, of just leaving. And you need to have a spirit of just leaving things alone. God is trying to do some things in all of our lives, and we just keep picking that thing up again. That's it. So David says we ought to wait on God. The scripture says, the lamentation says that we ought to wait patiently for God. That's right. So David said when you wait patiently for God, you don't force it. You don't make it happen. You, it, it just takes place because right. of the almighty, right. all seeing, all knowing God. I told you he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's almighty. I told you that he's uh, he's omniscient on the science, meaning he knows everything. He sees everything. And not only that, he is omnipresent. He's every place at the same time. Wherever he goes, he bumps into himself. He is the almighty, true, and delivering God. He's able to bless us in spite of us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Final point is that we're purified through God. The commercial comes on that there are tired parts and they keep you clean regardless of what you have in your clothes. All you have to do is, is drop one in and it comes out whiter than 
snow. It's called Tide Pods. Yeah. It, it, is, it is so clean, it leaves your clothes so clean until you begin to wonder where the stain was. Mm. The Bible says, and everyone who has this hope, what hope? Who has this hope that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Everyone who has this hope that they are the children of God. Everyone who has this hope that they will be like him when he shows up again. Let me tell you, you can't be like him unless you know him. Right. says, everyone who has this hope in him, in purifying himself. You know, in other words, God has a way of allowing you to purify yourself. The body, the body, we take a lot of medication. If you don't, don't raise your hand. If you take a lot, people take a lot of medication. Yes, no. But God has put a system together. Mm. Right when we were born, God put a, a healthy system together mm. where the body knows when the body needs to heal itself. Uh -huh. I didn't say stop taking your medication. I know you got Google. I know, I know you got twi Twitter. You probably already, I, the pastor didn't say stop taking your medication. But what I am saying, Many people are taking too much medication because they don't understand that the body heals itself. And, and, and every now and then, you have to jump off the medication in order for God to show you what God is trying to do with you. We're coming up to a fast. We come, we, we begin in our fast, January 10th. Let me make a public service announcement and let you know, January 10th, we're beginning our fast. It's the Daniel fast, so you don't have an excuse. You don't have to worry about your medication. You're still eating something, right? It's the Daniel fast. It's coming up January the 10th. We're starting January 10th, going for 21 days to January 30th. And just, let me just share with you, God can heal you of some things. God can bless you through some things if you totally commit to him. Now, don't tell God you can come in the living room, but you can't come in the bedroom. Don't tell God you can come in the kitchen, but you can't come in the den. Don't tell God that you can have this of me, and you can't have that of me. you got to totally commit to him. As you totally commit to him, he purifies us. You know, because I know there are no greater gospels than in the church. I mean, the church has, church folk has the trophy. For gossiping. Girl, I ain't one that's messy, but. Girl, I ain't talking nobody's business, but. And now men have taken on that spirit. And they have taken on that spirit to the point that they smooth and cool with it. You know, they say, you know. But God want to rearrange you. God wants you to be purified. He wants you to purify yourself through the word of God, the blood of Jesus Christ. He wants you to purify yourself through attending to God, getting one-on-one -on -one with him and watching God do what God does. All right. yeah, all right, Public service announcement. We listen to the Bible every day because the word of God washes us. The word of God cleanses us. The word of God makes us who we are. We, yeah. We're studying the word as a unit, as, as corporate, as a corporate unit. We are studying the word of God. We're, we're journaling the word of God every day. It's just a second. I know you have no excuse. You don't have to get behind anymore. You can start today listening to the word. And then as I send out you the daily reading, you can make sure that you journal your daily reading because it purifies us yeah. and it washes us. That's right. What can wash? We are sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He says that, that those who have this hope, everyone who has this hope in him, and who? And Jesus purifies himself just as he is pure. He purifies us through. We're purified through God. We're, we're purified. We're made different. We, we are made different. We are made over again. This word purified means that we are sanctified. Sanctified means we are set apart. means we are holy. We are different. People ought to see some difference in you this year than they seen last year. Right. You, you ought not be walking around saying, you just got to accept me for who I am. You just told me that you don't want to grow. You're not going to grow. And God can't even make you grow. 
This word, this word purify, it simply means that you are made over again. And it also means a word that you are very familiar with. It sanitizes you. Mm -hmm. It sanitizes you. It makes you clean. That means it cleans the germs of sin. That's right. That's right. Sanitize you. And we want to be like him. Mm -hmm. Who is him? His name is Jesus. Yeah. Brother, we're like on clothing now. His name is Jesus. It is him in him we live. It is in him we move. It is in him we are purified. It is in him he makes us whole. It is nobody but Jesus the Christ who is in him. It's not them. It's not her. It is him. His name is Jesus. He purifies us. He makes us whole. He sanctifies us. He sanitizes us. He makes us different. His name is Jesus. We are the children of God because he is the son of God. Not the daughter of God. He's the son of God. He's God's only begotten son who took a dogwood tree and washed up Calvary's hill. He died, I tell you. Mean men killed him. He died for you. He died for me. He died on a stone hill called Calvary. His name is Jesus. It was a voluntary death. There were three men hanging on the cross. One on the right. One on the left. But the one that matters is him. The one in the middle. He died on a stone hill called Calvary. He died into the S-U-N. Refused to shine. He died and so because the S-O-N was shining real bright. He died, I tell you, to the earth, to the epileptic thing. Begin to reel and rock like a drunken man. He died, I tell you, until it became midnight. That's midday. He died, I tell you, for you and for me. They took him off the cross. They took Jesus off the cross. They really messed up. But Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. One centurion soldier cried out, surely this must be. Surely. for three days. But out of that Thursday morning, out of that Thursday morning, out of that Thursday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth and earth. He rose early in the morning before Peter and John could get to the grave. He rose from the dead before the women could have known his body. He rose from the dead. He got up with all power in heaven and earth and earth. That same Jesus Call a cloud. We're talking about purifying. He called a cloud and got out of here. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And every time you need purifying, every time you need sanitizing, every time you need convicting, he's making intercession for you. If you confess your sins, walk away from your sins, repent of your sins, he's making intercession for you. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. Maybe any sessions is for me. But one of these days, yeah. at the trump of God, yeah. one of these old days, yeah. at the voice of the archangel, one of these old days, he's going to crack the sky. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him. And you yeah. You think we celebrate down here? Yeah. Just wait a while. Just be patient. Just give it a few more minutes. Just give it a little while. You think we're celebrating out here. When we get on the other side, every day will be something. When we get on the other side, every day will be hallelujah. When we get on the other side, every day we're going to join in and celebrate the King of Kings, the conquering King of Calvary, Jesus himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm on my way. Will you go with me? I'm on my way to the other side. No more crying. No more weeping. No more dying. No more backbiting. No more lying on me. No more confronting. No more stuff that I don't have to deal with. On the other side. Hallelujah to the Lord. Rejoicing in the Lord. All the day long. Thank you.
thank God for Jesus. Thank God. I said, I thank God for Jesus. Thank you. He made a way out of no way. I don't deserve to be here. But it's because of God's mercy and because of God's grace. He should have cut, he should have cut you off while you were doing drugs. He should have cut you off while you were prostituted. He should have cut you off while you were gossiping. He should have cut you off while you were lying. He should have cut you off while you had a bad attitude. But his grace and his mercy gave us another chance. Hallelujah to the Lord. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Back home in the sanctified church, they used to say it like this. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, they said, every time I turn around, God is just blessing me. Every time I look around, God is blessing me. You see, you don't have to wait till you get on the other side. You can celebrate him today. You can celebrate him today. It is celebration time. You ought to begin the year celebrating him. You ought to begin the year thanking him. You ought to begin the year thanking him for who he is and what he's already done. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. I said, thank God for Jesus. Not for the preacher. Not for the boss. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We thank you for what you've already done. His name is Jesus. The righteous Lamb of God. Hallelujah to us. You think it's noisy over here? When we get over yonder? There's going to be some carrying on over here. I'm telling you, there's going to be some carrying on. You know, some folk in church get to the point to say, oh, it doesn't take all that. They just found it. It doesn't take all that. But if you knew my story, if you knew what God has brought me from, you would beat me with my dance. You, you would hit, you would celebrate with me. And you would glorify his name. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. I said, the door is open. There may be somebody present with us today who never confessed Christ as your as personal Savior. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get it right with God. The door is open. You tried it. You tried her. You tried him. You tried them. I recommend you try Jesus. If you want to try Jesus, just bow your head with me. And join me in this simple prayer. And repeat after me. So Jesus can be sitting on the right hand of the Father. Making an intercession for you. Just join me in this simple prayer. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. There may be others who have had a half decent commitment last year. I recommend to you today to totally submit to Jesus. Totally turn over to God and trust him. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with us. Father God, we thank you now for this new year. We thank you for every revolution, every revelation, and every restoration. Bless us now, Lord. Lord, forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for not trusting you. Bless us to be whole again. We rededicate. We renew. We recommit. Lord, we ask you to accept us and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Now maybe with others of you who are in between church homes or don't have a church home. 
I recommend the New Beginning Church. Where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. You can come walking down the aisle and you can inbox me and let me know that you want to join the New Beginning Church. We we're glad to celebrate with you. We were glad to welcome you to your new family of faith. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. Let's thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. God has blessed us again, and I'm still in awe and wonders of God's amazing love toward us. It is offering time. It is time for us to give to the Lord. Through tithes, offering, and sacrifice, we give. It is time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrifice, and give. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand, and you will be served. If you need an envelope, raise your hand, and you will be served. And if you're on the broadcast, and you want to give, either by mail or by sale, you can do so. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can give by way of Zell. Our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for every gift. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you for jobs. We thank you for retirement. We thank you, Father God, for giving us money. Now, Lord, as we come to give unto you, bless us in our gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
glory and honor to God and to the pastor and the first lady of this church. Uh, we come um, uh, giving greetings to Michael. He says hello and he blesses me here. Amen. Um, I have with me my daughter Zaria uh, Middleton. Um, she's a longtime uh, uh, affiliation with uh, this ministry, and uh, she is visiting us. She is a uh, and um, she's a third year student at Hampton University. She's leaving. Um, next guys and people who, who bless her life. I have my niece, um, Amira. Uh, Amira. She's going to be one of Miss, uh, Miss Davis's uh, piano students soon. Amen. And I have my sister uh, by another mother, Leanna Harris. And uh, that's her name. Thank you so much for coming. Zara used to be little. You used to be a little bitty girl. Hey, man. Thank y'all so much for coming. Thank you for, for being a part of our service today. Thank you for including us in your, your itinerary today. Thank you so much. Anybody else who would like to stand and, and say hello to us? Anybody else? Anybody else who won't? Don't want to stand, but don't stand because the pastor wants you to stand. <laughs> And say hello to me. Oh, there's one. Hello. Hello, I'm Natasha Butler. And I was invited up to by my mother and Pastor Who is your mother? Cheryl Barney. Cheryl Barney. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. I'll send you the copy of the people. I knew her. She's a little bit girl. Amen. Anybody else would like to say hello to us who are pleasant? Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. I guess everybody else is members, right? Everybody? Oh, okay. Say hello to us. Amen. I just want to say good morning. I'm just blessed to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And I thank God I'll be back here. I've been here once before. Yes, ma'am. And I'm with my sister. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for coming. Hello. Thank you hello. for being a part of our service today. Yeah, I, when I was preaching, I said, now, Louis on this side and Louis on that side. I said, okay, that's Lula and that's Lou. And that's Lulu right there. So I said I had two Lulus in the house today. Thank you so much for coming. To so all our visitors, thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being here. Is this uh, Sunita Samuel? Sam, 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 Sunita? Hi, Sunita. How are you? Is that Sunita or Sarita? Sunita. Sunita. Oh, I got it right. Thank you so much for visiting. You want to tell us who invited you here today? Uh, we were looking for our church. And I can't hear you. This is it. Thank you so much. Look at God. Look what God has done. Hallelujah. Thank you. As a church, I'd like to give you the right hand welcome and fellowship to the New Beginning Church. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then there's Miss, is this Mons Morris? Are you reading my last name? I'm trying to. <laughs> Yeah, it got something like that. <laughs> Why don't you stand up and say hello to us? Christina Morris? I don't like this part, but hello, guys. <laughs> I'm Lucia. We were just looking for a church, and God took us here. So he sure did. Hey. He sure did. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming here, Morris. If I move that a little bit, I'll get Morris out. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We're, we're looking to enlist you in our volleyball team here at the church. I'm sure you can. You can fulfill our, our dreams on the front line. Amen. Thank you. There you go. Amen. Thank you so much. I'd like to give you a call and talk with you and uh, and welcome you to the New Beginning Church and such a great experience. Amen. It's time for now for us to move to our communion. Uh, this is a period where we honor Jesus Christ and what he has what he has done for us and how he has been a, a blessing to our lives. It's called communion. Here at our church, we do it uh, once a month and, and also annual days where we uh, fellowship with each other by way of communion. Jesus has set the stage for us. For all who are born again and those who have been baptized, we serve them communion uh, because we believe that if you're in this newfound faith in Jesus Christ, uh, we ought to celebrate what Jesus has done. Before Jesus died, he called his disciples apart and called them up and said, This is my body, and this is my blood, and this is for the remission of your sin. So ever since that day, men, women, boys, and girls all over the world has been celebrating Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. It is known as communion. The 
word communion means that we are in right fellowship with God. And so since you're in right fellowship with him, don't break fellowship. In the message we talked about being sanitized and purified, there is nobody on planet earth worth you breaking fellowship with God. Amen. So what you have to do is make sure, make sure that your heart is turned toward God. If you need to forgive somebody, go on, forgive them, forgive them. This is a good time to forgive them, regardless of what they did, what they said, how they acted toward you or didn't act. This is communion, and there's nothing in this world more powerful than communion with God. So let's pray it and invite God to purify our hearts and our minds. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we realize that you are the pure God. You're the only one who can sanitize us, make us whole, and bless us. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for missing the mark. Forgive us for falling short. God, we ask you, Father God, today that you continue to watch over us as we approach the table, that we will drink no damnation, and eat no damnation to our soul. Lord, we ask you to forgive us. And Lord, we thank you for the victory we have in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray.
you do continue to pray for those on our prayer list. See, I told you, once you get 50, things start going, going somewhere. Amen. So let's lift those up on our prayer list and continue to lift them before the Almighty God. Amen. 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 Before God. Amen. We're going to ask Charles to come up. We want to pray for him. He can come up. Oh, it's not this time. Restore health, restore strength, move as only you can. Lord, we thank you for our visitors. We ask you to bless them in their going. Yes, yes. Give them strength, give them hope. Yes, yes. We pray, Father God, for their education. We pray for their finances. We pray for their health. Lord, we pray for their commitment to you. Lord, we thank you for every person who's come out, every person who listened. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. And the Bible says, after they had partaken of communion, they sung a hymn and they went out. You are dismissed. 